It is good to be back. I can't wait to meet the Master. Yes, I'm sure Jesus will be very happy to see us. He will be even more happy when we tell him where we have been and what we have done. The disciples all headed to where Jesus was preaching. They were very eager to talk to him. There he is. Come, let's go to him. There is so much to tell him. Wait, it won't be possible to talk to the master here. There are so many people around him. Then what should we do? In the meanwhile, Jesus had spotted his disciples and came forward to meet them. He embraced them all and said, You are all back. I have just received news that John the Baptist has been beheaded, which has saddened me a lot. But I am also happy to see you all again. Oh, Master, we can't express how happy we are to see you, and we have so much to tell you. Jesus looked around at all the people gathered and said, I don't think it will be possible to talk here with so many people around. There is an isolated place a little ahead. Let us make our way there so that we shall not be disturbed. I'm sure you must all be tired also and wanting to rest also. However, when the people saw Jesus leaving with the disciples, they also joined them, and some even went ahead to the place Jesus was going to with his disciples. Many of them had brought their ailing family and friends, and had seen how Jesus had cured them, and they just wanted to follow him. Therefore, when Jesus arrived there, the place was already crowded. Look at these people. Can't they leave us alone for some time? Why do they keep following you, Master? Do not be angry with them, but feel pity in your hearts for them. These people are lost. They need someone to guide them. Don't worry, we shall talk later. Jesus walked towards the crowd, sat down on a rock, and began to once again teach them. After some time, his disciple came up to him and whispered in his ear, My Lord, it is getting late, and the nearest town is quite far away. At least now send these people away so that they can go and find something to eat in some nearby village. Jesus looked at the disciple for a long moment and then said to him, Would it not be possible for us to give them all something to eat? What are you saying, Master? Have you any idea what it would cost to feed this large crowd? No. You tell me. The disciple became a bit uncertain as Jesus kept looking at him calmly. Er, well, Master, 
I think that to feed this whole crowd, it would cost about as much as a man's wages for eight months. Hmm. Is there no one here who has any food? Peter's brother, Andrew, was listening to the conversation Jesus was having with his other disciple, and he then spoke up. I did see a young lad over there with five small loaves of barley and two tiny fish. And how many people will that feed? It will be hardly enough for the young lad himself. Jesus did not reply, but kept looking at the crowd very calmly. I see that after being away from me for so long, your faith in me has wavered. Oh no, Master, please do not say that. It is just that... Don't worry. It is now time again for you all to witness the glory of God. So saying, Jesus started to walk slowly towards the crowd, with his disciples following behind. When they reached the spot where the crowd was gathered, the disciple once again went up to Jesus and whispered in his ear, Master, please do not mistake me, but do you see the crowd? There must be at least 5,000 people. Jesus turned to him and once again smiled at him calmly. Do not ever doubt the glory of God. Now, all of you, do my work. Go and ask the crowd to be seated on the grass and ask the young boy with the barley loaves and fish to come up to me. The disciples did as Jesus asked them, and one of them went up to the young boy and told him that Jesus wanted to see him. Here, my lord, is the boy who has the loaves and fish. Come here, my boy, and show me what you have. The young boy became very nervous when Jesus called him and stood there hesitantly. Don't be afraid, my child. I just want to see what you have to eat. The boy walked up slowly to Jesus, showing him the two small fish and five loaves of barley. Ah, those look good. Come, give them to me, and we shall all share your meal. What is the master doing? That meal is hardly sufficient for one person. How is everyone going to share it? Didn't Jesus just tell you not to doubt the glory of God? Don't you know him well enough by now not to ever doubt him? Now wait and see what he does. Jesus took the loaves and the fish from the little boy and started praying. When he finished, he broke the loaves into small pieces and then asked his disciples to give the pieces to the people. After the loaves, he did the same with the fish. To everyone's amazement, there was enough bread and fish for all the people gathered there. The disciple who had doubted what Jesus was doing fell at his feet. My Lord, forgive me. Never will I ever doubt you again. Jesus bent down and placed his hands on the disciple's shoulders and then embraced him. Come now, let us also have the bread and fish. After everyone had eaten their fill, Jesus asked the disciples to gather up the leftovers. Master, there are twelve whole baskets of fish and loaves left over. The people who had eaten now became aware of what Jesus had done. They began chanting that he was the prophet who had come to the world to save them. Jesus realized that they would soon demand that he be made king, which he did not want. Thus, as soon as he could, he quietly withdrew and went away to the mountains by himself.